what else is happening? Let's talk about a few other things. And um, there's some things to discuss. And uh, it's it's who is the best team in the AFL right now? Who's who's the premiership favourite? Because I thought Melbourne was good. Then they lost to Brisbane. So now I'm like, nah, not Melbourne. I don't know about Melbourne. Geelong's winning. But at the start of the season, teams people were tipping them to not even make the eight. But they're second and they're five and zero. So I'm like... How can it be Geelong? Like, no one was tipping them to finish in the top six at the start of the season. Port Adelaide. I did. Geelong was six in my predicted ladder. Well, there you go. You're a rare, you're, you're a rare cat, though. Part nice. of the pun. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well, before you keep going here, I'd like to know who's who Geelong have played so far because it's a, it's a very impressive start. I know this. they just yeah. took care of North Melbourne. Yeah, I'll mm. let you know. I'm not sure that they've faced anyone be- too good, but but I do think that people have seriously underrated how good they'll be this season. Well, this is who they've beaten. Bulldogs, um, they beat North Melbourne. They, they beat Bulldogs the week before. Hawthorne, Adelaide, and Geelong. Uh, and, and, and St Kilda, sorry. Now, okay, this is so what they I'll haven't, add. They haven't beaten a single team inside the eight. Yeah, and, I, and guess what? I'll throw, I'll throw, I don't know if Sydney's the same in terms of, Mate. But Sydney are struggling. They're, they, are, You guys lost to Richmond, who just <laughs> lost to West Coast. Uh, you guys are far from the best team in the comp after that. No, I completely agree that we're, we're not the best team in the comp. But again, we talked about this on last week's podcast. We're not struggling at four and one. The best we team. Beat, are, hold on. We beat Melbourne, who are also... Struggling. They, they're <laughs> no, not, they're, they're not, not struggling. struggling. They just yeah. lost to Brisbane. They're yeah. inside the eight. We beat Collingwood in the second round of the season before anyone knew that Collingwood were going down a different path this season. <laughs> um, and so I don't that's think a, we're struggling at all. I think we're, we're still looking quite good, but I don't think you can call us the best team in the comp at the moment. I would say personally that I think when you look at the best team in the comp right now, it's got to be GWS. It's got to be yeah. GWS. Or Port. Or Port. Yeah, Port are good too. Yeah, Port are very good. I think the game they had on the weekend beating Freo was impressive. Um, and it, But I think GWS are the clear best team at the moment. Agreed. Um, but in saying that, I don't there's think not uh, much space between them and second and third and fourth. I think, I think it's so close this year. And the fact that Brisbane just beat Melbourne throws them into the equation, even though they've only won... Two games this year. They're, what, what are Brisbane? They're two and three. Mate, Collingwood as well. They're thirteenth and they're two and three. You're, that's a ridiculous thing to say. What? That that the fact that Brisbane just beat Melbourne throws them into the equation of being the best team. They've well, struck. They okay, haven't won a match. Not the best team, but in the premiership. Contention. They haven't won a match yeah, at home. They're in this premiership season. contention. That's what I'm so sorry. That Potentially. We don't even know if they'll make the eight. Yeah, but they, they played in the grand final last year. And yeah. they're, 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 they haven't won a match at home this season so far. They've been far. pushing so they've hard. They've had some off-field struggles. And they just beat Melbourne, a team who is also potentially struggling. They've got off-field problems as well. And like I said, I'm not convinced about Melbourne this season. Well, what about and, the team that just said, lost to the team that just lost to West Coast? But hold on. <laughs> <coughs> Look, you, if we do said this carousel of who lost to who, then we're going to end up just completely confused and with nothing interesting to say. Okay, no, but, this but, is how you but base one your last, opinions. One, oh, last point, how... one last point on this issue is that you said that Brisbane are in contention for the best team in the comp right now because they beat Melbourne. Well, who else beat Melbourne and who is 4-1? and one? Sydney in the first game of the season. So if you're going to use that logic, make sure it's coherent. This is what I mean. What I sorry, not best team, but in the premiership window. What That's I what think trying to Hats say. is saying is that past performance indicates that Brisbane know what it's like to go through a season and get to the pointy end. And they've got that sort of experience that other clubs don't have. So even though they're currently down on form, they have the... I suppose you'd say, I don't know, wisdom or, yeah, experience that clubs who end up being successful in finals need to have because they've been there before. Even though they've had a tough start to the season, they are better placed to go up the ladder than other clubs who are down there at the moment. Yeah, I do agree with you. I think that they can definitely still do some damage in the finals. And I'm not actually sure that it's GWS's year this year. I'm not sure that they can go all the way. I think they're looking very, very good at the moment, but I'm just still not convinced that it's their time to win a premiership. Hey, you're not convinced about anything. Oh, no, I am. I am. I'm convinced that... Uh, <laughs> you're a sceptic. No, I'm, I'm convinced that the Sydney Swans are making the grand final, if not winning it this year. 
Well, I th- well I'm convinced that you're an idiot. Well, but you know what? Like, why? Because I just think that's an outrageous thing to say. Why? It just is. <laughs> hey, oh, you're about to get kicked Come out. On. <laughs> you, you, use your words. Come uh, on. You, I think it's like the worst call. Like, it's, he's got a bit of merit behind it. Use your words. What's the problem with that call? None you of called me an idiot and you haven't backed up your claim. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take this outside? <laughs> All right. That'll be off air then. <laughs> I didn't realise this was going to work so quickly. Oh, actually. But the tension that you mentioned in the po- pre podcast has ke- clearly come to blows. Mate, you can't even speak straight. You're trembling right now. Aren't you? <laughs> hey, Charlie. Come on, back up your claim. Why do you think I'm an idiot for saying Swans are going to be in the grand final? None year? of your players have aura. How about that? <laughs> really? Because I know that Errol Goulden happens to be one of your favourite players in the competition. And another big story is that he's just re-signed yep. until the end of 2028 with us. Yeah, he and rejected he get, he a 10-year deal from the Crows, they say. What um, did you think of that, Connor? Errol well, I, I was never in doubt that but, he'd stay with us. Because but he's only he's stayed for, what, three or four years? Well, he came through our academy. So he's been with us since he was younger than a teenager. Do you reckon, so what do you guys think about him only signing for three years? I think it was four years he extended. Until the end of 2028. So why, why, do you reckon that's smart from him or, or a bit silly? How old, I think that'll, he'll be 27 or something by the time he, um, he, that deal's done. Like a lot of players are signing longer deals. Yeah, well, this is what Kane Corn sort of makes his whole career off is criticizing. Well, no, he, he doesn't. I actually like Corns, but he criticizes long term contracts a lot, and he sometimes is right, but he's also sometimes wrong. Like he criticized giving Carlton giving George Hewitt four years, which was a great deal for us. But with Goulden, I think that that seems like a very smart move for him and yeah. great for the Swans. I would like to just correct you though. When I said your, none of your players have aura, I was trying to provoke you. However, your response that you know that Errol Goulden happens to be one of my favourite players, and he is one of my favourite players, and he was a massive Carlton supporter growing up too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's um, your biggest bragging right in this podcast, isn't <laughs> it? I just want to say that just because a player has aura, that, that doesn't mean I like them, and just because a player doesn't have aura, that doesn't mean that I dislike them. There are plenty of players with aura who I dislike, such as Jordan Degoe. So y- are you... <laughs> okay. I was I was going to ask if you're seriously saying that no one on the Swans has any aura, but I know you're not seriously saying that. Well, so I mean, but out, of curiosity, you here out of curiosity, who would you say has aura? We've got lots of players. Tom Papley, he's the best celebrator in the competition. Celebration, he's absolute, that's... He's he, an absolute Because you run starter. really fast and pump your fists into the air and, you know... Talk some smack every now and then. That doesn't mean you've got aura. Chad Warner. Papley's more of a Maynard type in that he pretends like he's got aura, but he doesn't. Are you going to let me finish? Maybe. Chad Warner, he's absolutely exciting. as Great player. No aura. Isaac Heaney, Rolls Royce. He's looking like favourite for the Brownlow so far this season. Great player. Love to watch him. No aura. Okay, so what's your definition of aura? Because at this point you are just Jordan Degoe. Not players. What's the definition? Well, there's different types of aura. I feel like I've done aura, which is a fairly indefinable thing across cultures, across history. I feel like I've done an okay it's job. It's also a completely subjective thing. So you can't tell me that none of my players have aura if I think they do. <laughs> okay, firstly, when did you start owning the Sydney Swans? <laughs> Talking about <laughs> none of my players hey. have aura. <laughs> That's my first question. Uh, secondly... Yeah, it is subjective, but I just I'm interested to know who you think has aura on your team because I I've actually think you. that Swans are a little bit deficient in the aura department. <laughs> you're dreaming. You're a little bit aura no, deficient. No, you're, you're seriously dreaming. We've got more fire starters than anyone you know. What about it's, Lizard as well? Lizard's got a bit of aura. There you go. Right, he's got some charisma. He's got some. He's got some aura. I can imagine him running down the flank in a you know the MCG in the grand final. He's got something about him. So there you go. Lizards one. Okay, so take back your claim that we don't have any players with aura. Y- you don't... Okay, you've got some players with aura, but you're generally aura deficient. Because you're doing everything you can right now <laughs> just to try and play devil's advocate and provoke me. And if you want to take this outside afterwards, we can. <laughs> we'll film it. <laughs> um, <now laughs> Get a, put it live. Live film it on head yeah. over the footy. We'll have a little well, wrestle. look, Hats is a... Not Hats, sorry. Um, Connor's a personal trainer and quite a large individual so i'd rather i'm you know quite happy to just stay on the couch and have a war of words rather than 
in which you're Fist losing flying. as well. I know you practice Brazilian jiu-jitsu and so forth, but I can yeah, speak Brazilian. Charlie, I want to ask you... <laughs> you know, Brazilian's not a language. Yeah, it's right. Portuguese. I want to ask you, Charlie, about... You're talking about Donald Trump accent pre-show. <laughs> Can you go into this? You sounded like you had something <laughs> up your sleeve for the show. That's quite a segue here, Max. This is but quite wait, a segue. And you've Before also we get onto this, there is one more footy topic that I want to discuss. Well, yeah, and that is we Kane get, Corns. We'll get to our questions of the crowd as well. Kane um, Corns so has been, know. he ripped into the Bulldogs and Luke Beveridge last night. Or what did he or say? Over the weekend, just saying that Luke Beveridge seriously needs to answer. For Luke it. Beveridge, worst coach in the AFL. He's the worst coach in the AFL. <laughs> that's not bad Thanks is that, is, that, is, that, is that the end of it? Well I mean I could keep going But this is all imp- improv So Yeah I'm not okay. sure what else I can say You know well, what would so be what funny What Luke would be Beveridge? really funny Is doing Luke Beveridge's rant Against Tom Morris In a Trump accent that Well what good. do you Well tell us what you think Should happen to Luke Beveridge What is Can you just give me a quote That Luke Beveridge said to Tom Morris In that press conference Did he say Get out of the room mate <laughs> Uh, no, I can't. Did he say that? Anyway, we'll plan that for another podcast. But what did you say? What do I think of Luke Beveridge? I'm a Luke Beveridge defender. I want you to answer in a specific way. About in the Trump voice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jack McRae. I'm not putting Jack McRae in the side. He can stay in the VFL. <laughs> what about Caleb? Caleb Daniel, too short. He's too short for an AFL side. I, Caleb Daniel walked into the room and said, Well, that's a really short guy. You're not playing <laughs> AFL. <laughs> that's pretty good That's pretty good That's pretty damn good oh, I'm actually I'm impressed. concerned That you're actually From America Obama <laughs> <laughs> Here we go Here we go Watch this uh, Caleb Daniel uh, Great play uh, Phenomenal <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to Try and get Mason Cox On okay. the show With this video I'm going to I'm going to send this To Matt Coxie i okay. try and get him on Mason Cox Fantastic player Personal friend of mine <laughs> Tremendous player Okay that's it folks <laughs> uh, What about in Obama's voice uh, Mason Cox No uh, that wasn't good enough Boop beep Oh beep that Oh beep it uh, out My beautiful wife uh, Michelle uh, That's all I can do That's good Obama's voice Alright uh, Connor what were you going to say Because we don't have much time We've got to well, get to our questions From the crowd to Bevo And it's a great video It's a great watch It's on the AFL Instagram page Game Did you agree for, with for him For a couple minutes straight Yeah I did uh, Look I'm, I'm not a fan of Bevo and I'm not a fan of the Bulldogs, which we know. You can't say that, mate. That, that's unjustified. How can you not be a fan of a club? Mate, you're not a fan of the Carlton Blues as a Collingwood that's supporter, the, and we know that very, very well. That's not true at all. <laughs> I like Carlton. <laughs> oh, I seriously. want them to make the top four. They're one of the biggest clubs in the country. I want it to be Collingwood Carlton Grand Final. The only thing that's stopping me from liking that slightly is the fact that I'll, I won't be able to get tickets. Why not? Because the demand is going to go through the absolute bonkers of the roof. <laughs> the AFL will make an exception for over the footy, but no, listen, I was wanting a Carlton Collingwood grand final, which at one point was looking likely last year as well. But Max, you can't seriously sit here and say that you like Carlton when for the past 10 years that I've known you, you and, and Charlie have been getting into it every single day about you just like to provoke him about Carlton. And Charlie Gill, you know that's well, that, true, that, don't you? That's what I like. I like to provoke him about Carlton. I think that's I actually. I think that's actually a good point. I think Hatzel loves to rile me up much exactly. more than he loves to hate Carlton. Yeah, and that's okay. changed ever since I've become. I've had to report on the AFL and all. Ever that. since you've become the man that you are, yes, the media magnate, you've yeah, sort of had the media to sort mongle. of. Yeah, Actually, calm down. Did you say mongol? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the word's mogul, right? The media mongol. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it's pronounced. You run it? a lot of it's newspapers not Mongol, in, uh, no. Mongolia. Mongol. There's no N. <laughs> There's no N, mate. But as we do call, we Make do sure. have a little nickname for Hatsi here at the head over the footy studios, and that is Hachi Jr. So. No, I'm not Hachi. I'm different to Hach. Who's, who I'm are we talking about here? Craig Hutchinson. You know him? No, I don't. Do your research. But anyway, mate, get, get to your point about Kane Corns. He's a media magnate. we got to get to the questions of the crowd. Okay, let's so get to the did questions. You agree, actually, you know what? You've already, you've already made your point. Now, my, my, I'll, say, I'll tell you what I think about Bevo. I think just because Bulldogs have lost a game doesn't suggest that Bevo should go. I, I don't like it how all, everything, all the attention just get, get, gets on to Bevo as soon as they lose. Like, if they win, Bevo's all of a sudden, like, fine. It's not like... It, it just annoys me. And, and I read stuff about them in the off-season and they made some changes. Chris Grant, the head of footy, made some changes that I disagree with. 
that Bevo did an interview with Glenn McFarlane from the Herald Sun and they they changed some roles around and Bevo said the tension has eased because he's not reporting directly to the person who he was having a few troubles with. They've put in a middleman now. So the, he, he reports to the middleman. And excuse me that I don't know the names, but these are the roles in the football department. And Bevo doesn't report directly to the person he was having a little bit of issues with. There's a person now in the middle who he reports to, and that goes... Okay. Now, I don't think that works. What do you think, Charlie? Should we excuse him? <laughs> <laughs> That's a conversation we'll have after the podcast. I, I'd be <laughs> I'm putting pressure on no, Chris Grant. I mean, here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, but... No, All right, but well, look, I'm not going to put the pressure on anyone because I don't think I know enough about the internal mechanisms of the Bulldogs football yeah. department. What I will say is that Luke Beveridge is a big personality. And when the Bulldogs lose, yeah, instantly he is the one who attracts all of the attention. Yeah. Because he's brought that on himself with, you know, previous sort of performances in the media, such as the one we just referenced with Tom, Tom Mar- Morris. Morris. But um, I've always been a defender of Luke Beveridge because I think that he has got aura. And I wasn't going to finish this. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> you weren't, and that's okay. But I think he's got aura. And unfortunately, at the moment, I don't think the players are quite buying into that. Well, that, that's the question that needs and to be I think asked. That, and I think, I think that's the question that has been answered by their performance on the weekend. Because cool. Luke Beveridge, you would think, is that sort of player, that sort of coach who can rally his troops, who's got that sort of it's us against the world sort of mentality. And the Bulldogs don't really seem to be buying into that at the moment. Then again, I don't think Essendon are anywhere near as bad as people were saying. Um, and I think they proved that on the weekend. And just because the Bulldogs lost to Essendon, that doesn't mean that the Bulldogs are yeah. a terrible team. And it doesn't mean, in my view, that the pressure should be putting um, on the pressure should be on Beveridge. Anyway, the another issue is Bailey Smith. Tom Morris was talking about it, and he is a little bit on edge. He isn't committed to a contract yet with the Bulldogs, so that's an issue. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into more of that, but uh, on another day. But uh, let's get into the questions of the crowd now. Um, Charlie, you got to head off soon, so we'll be quick here. But uh, quick fire. Our first question here from Mike Mortimer, the great man that run Mort's Meats. Um, he has asked about the goals and aspirations of head over the footy. <laughs> he is really putting us in the puppy. He wants to know what's going on. Well, I don't think me or Connor can answer that question. We yeah. are playing second fiddle to you. Uh, this Max. is all about you, Max. That's ugly. Well, look, it's it's us here. It's all about us. That's that's the that's the first thing. Um, Can I say in response to that question that there will be further head of the footy um, products coming out, uh, such as potentially the release of the head of the footy theme song, which was recorded right on this very couch a couple weeks ago. By yourself. By myself. Very nicely done. Are you going to re- Are you saying you're going to record again? No, no. I would like that original recording to be released under the head of the footy yep. name. Uh, Max Atsoglu's life story is told in that uh in that theme song which is perhaps why he hasn't wanted to release it yet yeah. because it does reveal some private information um but i think it's a good song it's very and well done i think the you. fans will love it so if we can generate some interest i'd love the theme song to be included on one of the head over the footy podcasts in future right. we'll, and, uh, we'll, we'll book that in i think it leaves a big scope for the head over the footy cinematic universe mm-hmm. yes. absolutely charlie is spectacular he did a very good job and the intro to this song he, to this podcast is done by charlie yeah. and max doesn't know what that means as well mm. so yeah keep going um <laughs> <laughs> goals and aspirations though, let me Connor. answer the question um the goals are um to continue growing build an audience we want to hit five thousand. Uh, we want to hit. We want to be in the thousands for followers. At oh least my. three three thousand followers on Insta by the end of the season. TikTok is flying. We have got stuff going viral. Twenty k plus views, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> um, one at least five hundred. Well, you know, we got to do a segment where we review some of the comments that come through on TikTok oh, because we've had a few funny ones this week uh, about that suit of yours, Max. Yeah. <laughs> saying, uh, why should we trust anything? that a bloke wearing a salvo suit on uh, TikTok <laughs> has to say about the AFL. Did someone say that? Yeah, someone said I was wearing a salvo suit. What did someone say in, on the YouTube video last week about me? Oh, oh, someone asked, like, oh, who's recording the intros? <laughs> so, no, oh. someone said um, Charlie kisses his dads on the lips. Um, you're spot on, Maxie. Why did you say dads? Huh? You said dads. 
Hey, we don't have much time. We, bit of time. <laughs> Charlie Gill's got to go, so You're I'll trembling. quickly wrap this up. But um, <laughs> we another goal is we want to get a, a, a little segment going, a cooking <laughs> segment <laughs> with Mike Mort's Meats. Mike Mortimer cooking us some meat. Um, and we can do a show where we collab and do a video collaborating Mort's Meats and then talking footy. And we'll work it out. It'll be cool. So that's that's one thing we'd love to do. Jack Fisher, he asked, how was Sydney? Sydney was good. I was up there with him over the weekend. And um, there's been no game of footy in Sydney for three weeks. And I just think that's a bit ridiculous. GWS played in Canberra on the weekend. But for Sydney, a major city in Australia, not to have a game of footy in three weeks is a big mistake, I believe. Um, and there's a YouTube video all about it. I've spoken all about it in one YouTube video, so you can go check that out. But I think a bit ridiculous there. And I completely agree with you there. Yeah. And I, but unfortunately, I don't think that's the question that Jack was asking because I think he was referring to some specific escapades that might have happened on Saturday night. So is there anything you can tell mate, us about? Bondi. We were in, in Bondi. It was, it, was, it was a great time. That's all I'll say, mate. We, uh, we went to this uh, the public bar. We went to this other place called Salty's which was nice. Uh, the weather was beautiful. The beaches there are incredible. Um, if I was an AFL player and you lived in Sydney, it's it's a pretty good setup. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and that's another contentious issue for another podcast because Eddie Maguire, who you know is your great mate, has, uh, has put... Punish the Sydney Swans for their extra cost of living allowance and now they get the same as Melbourne even though it's clearly more expensive yeah. up there. So that's a topic for another podcast. <laughs> Charlie right, Gill yeah. wants to wrap this I up. I wouldn't mind talking about the amount of players Sydney gets to via the academies as well because... That's a luck thing though. That's a luck thing. Other clubs will get... We'll Let's get, save we'll get, both we'll of these topics one. for another podcast because I believe we have more questions. Yeah. Well, I have to go. Yeah. <coughs> All right, well, Hansi asked, will there be a better mob than Max at Zoglu? And the answer to that is no. So, a great, what? great question, mob. Uh, w- Hansi. We, yeah, we don't actually know what that word you means. You search it up. It means like something, it's something good. I mean, what, did, did you search it up? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll um, read the, it's the urban dictionary um, uh, definition it, uh, here for us. But yeah, it's uh, a mob is apparently a kind and loving person who will make you laugh when times are rough. And always a person who loves being with their loved ones and makes hilarious puns. There so you go. That's uh, apparently what Max Hatsoglu is. Beautiful. Well, can well, I say as we end this podcast, Max Hatsoglu, hats off to you. It's been another fantastic podcast. <laughs> and with that pun, I think I may start to consider myself something of a mob. Absolutely. But I've got to go. <laughs> Absolutely. You've got to go, Charlie. We'll wrap this up. Thanks for coming on, Charlie. And Connor, thank you very much as well. No worries. Thanks, Hats. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful lads, well done. Oh, fuck, this is... Well done, lads. Oh, fuck, I think it was turned off. Fuck, did it?